Hello and welcome to this video. If you are a backend developer and would like to see how microservices architecture work, this video is right for you. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe. Microservice is a service-oriented architecture where an application is deployed as a collection of loosely coupled services. The goal is to make each service independent fine-grained, scalable, and flexible, allowing faster testing and release. In this video, we will develop an application that returns a job with a list of applicants. To make this exercise easy to understand, we will create a job service that will call the applicant service that returns a list of applicants for a particular job. Typically, one particular problem that we would like to resolve is scalability. What if we want to add more applicant nodes, because there's a complex operation done there? How are we going to distribute our service calls? Here's a diagram of the services we will build, divided into business and Spring Cloud services. Usually we create each service as a project, but we will make them as sub-modules of a parent project for this exercise. I'll be using IntelliJ. You can download a community edition from their website. Let's create a parent project using Spring Initializer template. You can copy the name and group that I will use here. But I suggest you use yours, at least for the group name. Let's give it the name LabSpring Microservice, which is also its artifact ID. Package name and group could be your last name. Click Next and then Finish. You can delete all these files and folders. Let's add our first Spring service, which is the naming service. Right click on our parent project, select new module, Spring Initializer. Set the name to naming server and change the group and package name accordingly. Find and select Spring Boot Actuator and Eureka server on the following screen. Click Finish. Once again, delete the unnecessary files. Open the parent project's pom.xml file and copy the group, artifact ID, and version. Open the naming server's pom.xml file and replace the content of the parent tag. Don't miss the relative fat tag. Remove the unnecessary tags. We will do this to all the projects that we will create afterwards. Rename the main application to application. It's just my standard. And annotate it with at Eureka server. Rename application.properties to application.yml for more manageable grouping. Add the following keys. Spring application name, server.port, which is spring standard for Eureka server, and Eureka client that register with Eureka equals false because this is a server and Eureka that client that fetch registry equals false. Open the run debug configuration, rename naming server application to naming server and remove the lab microservice spring. Let's run the server. Open your browser and navigate to http localhost port 8761. The naming server holds all the information about our microservices, such as name, IP, and port. This information is used for exchanging a service name to IP address and port. We will now begin creating our business services. First, we will make the applicant services with an endpoint that returns a list of names and job services that will produce a job and the list of names. We will use our naming service to facilitate inter-service communication. Right-click the parent project and change the name to applicant services. Change the group and package name respectively. In the following screen, find and select Spring Web, Spring Boot Actuator, Eureka Discovery Client, Sleuth, and Resilience 4J. Click Finish. Once again, change the parent form by copying the parent of naming server, which we already updated earlier. Rename application.properties to application.yml 
and input spring that application that name equals applicant services server dot port equals eighty eighty one server dot servlet dot context dash path equals forge slash applicants eureka dot client dot service url dot default zone equals localhost port eight seven six one port slash eureka where the eureka server is running rename the main class to application add a new class applicant controller under a new package web dot controllers annotate this class with at rest controller and add two endpoints first is the get applicants by job where we return a list of names don't forget to annotate this method with at get mapping and specify the endpoint applicants dash by dash job create a similar method name get applicants by job but in this one i would like to demonstrate how we can use resilience 4j which is a circuit breaker inside the method create a call to a url that doesn't exist using rest template Annotate the method with at retry with name equals default and add a fallback method parameter. Create a new method that is a fallback method. Add exception as a parameter and return a list of object. Configure retry in application.yml file. Set the following properties. Resilience.retry.instance.default That max retry attempts equals 5 that wait duration equals 500 or half a second enable exponential back off equals true which means for every retry we will double the wait time let's add a circuit breaker configuration if we want to use it let's add some logs create a new logger using slf4j library configure logging in application.yml Open the run debug configuration and rename applicant service application to applicant dash services. Let's test the service. Remember, we have added a context path for applicants. Thus, we need to enter it in the URL. Enter localhost port 8081 forward slash applicants forward slash applicants dash by dash job. How about the endpoint with a circuit breaker? Good. It calls a fallback method. Each call to the fallback increments the delay. If the first delay is 1, then next is 2, then 4. The following service that we have to create is a job. As we explained earlier, the service calls the applicant. Right click on the parent project and let's name it job-services. Update the group and package name accordingly. In the next screen, find and select Spring Web, Actuator, Eureka Discovery Client, Open Fain, and Sloot. Click Finish. Once again, remove the unnecessary files and update pom.xml, copying the parent tag from naming server pom. Remove the duplicated tags inherited from the parent project. Rename the main class to application. Create a new package, web.config. Under it, create a new class cloud config annotate this class with at enable fain clients with parameter base package classes pointing to our application class it means it will search our project's package starting with the application for fain clients create a new rest controller under web.controllers job controller annotate it with at rest controller add an slf4j logger Rename application.properties to application.yml. Add spring.application.name equals job services. Server.fort to 8080. Server.servlet.contextpath to jobs. And define the eureka.client service URL that default zone to localhost 8761 Eureka. And configure our logging, logging.level.root equals info. Setsuya com that Setsuya tech equals debug. Yes, similar to applicant service. Add two endpoints: list job with applicant profiles and list job with top applicants. For now, return null values. Add some logs. 
create a data transfer object for the response. Name it job with applicants. Add two fields job and a list of applicants as a string. Generate setters and getters. Add the Fane Client Applicant Proxy, which is an interface to our applicant controller. Annotate it with at Fane Client with parameter name as the value of spring.application.name of the application dash services. Copy the endpoints in applicant controller and paste them into applicant proxy. Remove the implementation details. Don't forget to add the context path value in the URL. It's the one we set in applicant application.yml all good inject the proxy class in job controller using the constructor start modifying the endpoints to call the applicant proxy enlist job with applicant profiles initialize the job with applicants dto with job java developer call the applicant proxy to get the list of applicants do the same with list job with top applicants, create the DTO, set the job, and call the endpoint that simulates a failure in calling downline services. Don't forget to add the at get mapping annotations with the appropriate URLs. Add some breakpoints. Open the run debug configuration and rename the job services appropriately. Debug the service. Please wait until it's registered on Eureka server. Job services is running on port 8080. Start testing the job services. Open your browser and type localhost port 8080 jobs applicants by job. Breakpoints are working correctly. All good. Next, localhost port 8080 jobs tap applicants by job. The downline service failed. Thus, it called the fallback method, giving us a default response. Let's add the final project, API Gateway. API Gateway is a service that provides criteria-driven request routing. It also offers other features such as security, load balancing, lagging, monitoring, and more. API Gateway is not at all different to the naming server. Thanks to Spring for doing the heavy lifting. Right-click on the parent project and select Module. Select Spring Initializer and change the name to API Gateway. Update the group and package names respectively. Search and select Eureka Discovery Client, Sleuth, and Gateway in the next screen. Remove the unnecessary files. Let's move the Spring Cloud version and dependency to the parent project and remove the duplicate tags. Update the parent project definition like the other projects as well. Change the main class to application and rename application.properties to application.yml. Give it a name API Gateway. Set the port to 8000 and register on Eureka. Don't forget to configure the lagging as well. Add a configuration class API Gateway configuration under config package. Annotate with at configuration. Create a route locator bin where we will define the valid routes. Path equals get, URI equals HTTP bin.org. We will use this for testing. Path equals applicants, URI is load balancer of applicant services. Path equals jobs, URI equals load balancer of job services. LB means load balance. Together with the naming server, they address the scaling problem that we present earlier. If we have n instances of a microservice, this should be able to handle that. In this case, you can run two instances of applicant services in different ports. Let's add a new component lagging filter, which extends global filter, and add some lagging information using SLF4J. We can also add security and other checks here. Update the debug configuration by changing the name to API Gateway. Debug the service. Make sure that it is successfully registered to the naming server. Let's start testing the get path. Localhost port 8000 forward slash get. It will redirect to the HTTP bin, which is a utility website that returns the details of our request. 
such as origin and URL. Our first business endpoint localhost for 8,000 jobs, job with applicant profiles. Breakpoints are working. The job service called the applicant service and we got this response. Let's try the second business endpoint localhost port 8000, jobs, tap applicants by jobs. We are in the API gateway. Notice the lag. We have this random string that the sleuth library generates every request received. It works as an identifier that we can use to trace the service calls. Take note of this string. Let's continue to the job services. As we can see, we have the same string ID for the second parameter. Then goes to the applicant controller where we can see the same string ID. It fails here and calls the fallback method. Hence, this response. Once again, thank you for watching and I hope you find this video helpful. Next time, I'll create a video on how we can replace Spring Eureka naming server with AWS AppMesh. Does that sound interesting? See you!